Welcome to the Westside Barbell Podcast. Today, we got a special guest, Jeremy Smith. And of course, as always with us, is Louis Simmons. So I'm going to hand this over to Louis and Jeremy and get this podcast started. Lou? Jeremy, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. How long have you been coming to Westside now? Uh, I started coming in early, over the summer, and then I came over during winter break of college right now. Okay, so, so you, you had a 556 squat. Yep. And what was your bench? Uh, roughly like 245. And your total? Uh, just over a grand. Over a grand. Yeah. So now, after coming here, and we'll explain how you did this, your your squat is what? My squat now is 670. At what body weight? 122? 123. 123. World record. Yeah. You set three world records, 650, yeah. 55, and 70. Right. And your bench is? Right now, 350. 350. And your and your total would be? 1,300. 1,300. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good progress. Um, so you're still in school, right? Yeah. And where do you go to school? Exercise science. And you're taking exercise so You know it's a waste of time. Yes. Everyone out there listening to the podcast, get your money back because it's a waste of time. And um, <laughs> there's nothing in those books you're going to learn to help you in sports at all. Right. And, okay, so let's talk about, let's, we're, we're basically we'll talk about the squat. Right. So I know when you came here, uh, because of the group you trained with, I mean, we throw every, just right to the dogs. Oh, yeah. So you, you had that 556 squat, and you used 250-pound of band tits, which is 44%. And the circle max weight, we used 440 pound of band, which would be 79 percent of what you could do. Right. But then you squatted 650 pounds, and at 122, so now the circle max came from 79 down to 67 percent because of the bar weight went up, and uh, then you made 655 and 670, and you did it on your circle max at 440 a band and 425 pound of weight, so at lockout it's 865. Yeah. Okay, uh, you know, I, I want to bring up something. I, you know, Jeremy's a very short. How tall are you, Jeremy? Four foot six. Okay, four foot six. A lot of people talk about the height. Height has nothing to do with this. Um, in reality, band tension, what band tension? Because he has small mass. If Jeremy was 400 pounds, it would be a joke. You know, big men, that's why big men got 1,200 squats and 800 deadlifts. Right. And, um, but what happens in band tension is it's not how tall you are. If a very tall person, I had a problem with two people. One was 6'10", one was 6'7". And there were big deadlifters, you know, 900, 915 deadlifters. Yeah. But they squatted. When they would sit back, their hips would go so far back that the bands would pull them forward. It had nothing to do with the vertical. It had to do with the horizontal. And that's where people get confused. You know, if a person gets down and starts leaning the way forward, band tension, you find out how hard it is. You want to do that. Yeah. And um, so that's not, your, that's not your problem, but uh, that's how we did it. And, you know, we did five sets of five. Right. And, uh, you know, your training weights was, uh, was 80, 85, and 90. 90 yeah. A lot of people want to ask because always we've used Perlipin's chart. And uh, Perlipin's chart was for weightlifters. It was for speed strength. Well, our sport is more of a strength speed. So I compromised. I took it up 5%. And uh, I'm going to talk about a few other examples here. But we've made incredible we progress good. in right. a short period of time. And um, so that's what we did. We took it up to 5%. And, um, you know, so you're doing 25 squats at 90% and more. One time, hell, you did you did your 100%, right? Yeah, or, yeah. 110%, what, you were saying? Uh, yeah, for, 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 for six reps or something. Yeah. Yeah. That was like the Monday after we came back from that meet. Right. So it, all this can be done. It just takes hard work. Right. Lot, you do, uh, uh, before we go on too much, I mean, the squat, we all box squat, sit on the same box, no box is higher, no box is low. You know, they're all the same. You, you can't, you know, con your way out of it. Yeah. Um, tell me about some of the assisted exercises you think help your squat. For me personally, I like the uh, reverse hyper and the MR19. With the MR19, there's nothing else like it on the market because of the fact that you're pulling yourself down into it. Yes. Whereas in your squat, you're pushing against it. Yeah, it is quite a, a machine. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, I actually thought about sprinting when I made that machine, but it's a sensational machine for everyone, oh, yeah. especially for health. Mm -hmm. It stretch out the psoas, your, your knees, your hips, everything. Uh, builds the crap out of your stomach, yep. but it's a real deal. I think when this thing get, really gets out on the market, people's going to really enjoy it. They should. I know another thing, uh, you squat on a low box. The low box we made up, yeah. Yeah, and your low box is what, four inches? Four inches high. Yeah. Two mats. Mm -hmm. You know, Angelo Bertinelli years ago went here, he had a 560 deadlift. I brought him in, made him do a low box six inch. No, right. Angelo was like five foot. And in in um, in six months, he went, he was stuck at 560. In six months, he pulled 640 to me. These low box squats is is uh, tr tr tremendous. I noticed also you do a lot of good mornings. Yeah, mm -hmm. we um, 
sometimes not even that heavy. We just go with the bar in sets of hundreds. And then um, if my upper back's killing me the other day, we'll do it on the uh, athletic training platform and just do a hip hinge. Uh, good morning. Yeah. So. You also, since you've been here, of course, you've gone to three meets. Right. But not only have you done three circuit maxes, you've also done some strength phases. Right. Uh, where we use an enormous amount of band tension. Yes. Um, you know, well, four, 440 and, and more. So you're, what, the, your biggest, well, you just made, I will put, we like to put things out on the line because Jeremy's lifting next weekend at 132. We're not going to cut weight. No, yeah. Um, and, um, but he made a, a four, uh, he made a 670 squat with 440 band and 425 weight. He just smoked a 440 band and 450 pound of weight. Right. We jumped 25 pounds. By that theory, we should squat 25 or 30 more pounds. Yeah. I'm going to go through someone else just in reverse. Uh, Shanae Corley. Um, Shanae had a uh, start out with nothing. Uh, I used a 140 pound of band, got her to 500 squat. Right. And I, I believe um, uh, that would be um, 28%. Then I raised the band tension to 210. And that was 35%. That, that took her to a 660 squat. At that point, we went to 250 pound of band tension for speed work, um, which is 35%. And she squatted 730. Now, here's the kicker. Because um, in the gym, we decided to take a full squat, which we seldom do. And she did a legit a parallel squat, beautiful squat, with 760 pounds, right. a 30 pound PR. Then we took her circuit max for the meet. And she jumped the same as Jeremy. She did 25 pounds. She did 440 and 450. Yeah. So it basically is proved out backwards. Like I said, it, 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 in and out, this works. If you jump 25 pounds on the box, you should squat 25 pounds of me. Yeah. Not your head, your head case where the box is too high or you got terrible form. Right. And um, so that just shows another example of it. But uh, tell me a little bit about your bench training. Uh, so <clears throat> bench training, a majority of it, I've been – like, when I'm not here, I try to use the shirt as best I can. But, like, obviously, not a lot of people have been using equipped, and you don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. So you can't just throw on a bench shirt in your college gym and ask somebody to hand off a bench. You're most likely going to smash the bar into your face. So with my bench training, I've been working on a lot of decline and incline because decline, I've seen that it has a great transfer over to using a bench shirt. So I've been PRing in my decline a lot recently which also I think has helped with my bench. All general. you people out here listening, and even possibly my own gym, decline is a big pr process yeah. of shirt benching. Right. Thank you. And uh, I think the first problem that I encountered was the fact that I'd always bring my hands in way too close when I was using the shirt. And you were telling me, I think one time we talked about the Chinese, that they brought their hands super wide. Yeah. And even though it, the, the amount of range of motion was not even that much, it still counted as a bench. Right. So I put my fingers, I put my ring finger, or try to put my ring finger on the uh, ring of the bar. And even though I got to get the bar handed into my hands, mm -hmm. it kind of pulls me out of position, but I still can get it down in the two or three inches that it is. So yeah, I know you smoked that 350 bench. It yeah. looked like an empty bar. Right. And then training, I know you put it on your day and did it. It's 360 easy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all you people out there listening, take advantage of your anatomy. Yeah. That's what Jeremy does. He's he's built a squat and bench. He's now built to dead. <laughs> so we worked the hell out of his grip. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, he's pulled around 400 with straps. Yeah. But he has a hard time hanging on the bars because he's got... Uh, Fat, you know, got, kick you got fat hands, yeah, yeah. and uh, a lot of gravy on them. Yeah, so you know, you got if it's not an advantage, it's a disadvantage. So always mm -hmm. work on your advantages and make the best of them. Right. Yeah. Um, how about um, so you do a lot? No, so for your grip because it's not very good. You do a lot of grip work. Mm -hmm. I try to um, with the sand. Mm -hmm. I feel like the sand works a lot. And then um, you were saying just work out in your car. So like I still have those five hour energies that you have in your my car. Yep. So uh, so. You just, just squeeze it, it yeah. like I do. Yeah, the, so, like, the six-hour ride home that I went home for Christmas, I, like, squeezed them. And I, my, between, like, here and I think West Virginia, my hands started cramping up. So I, so I had to stop for a little bit. Yeah. But other than that, just, just pinching and squeezing. It's not nothing. It's not rolling. It's more or less pinch grip mm -hmm. than anything else. Right. You want to build your fingers. Yeah. I got this in Cohen years ago. I said, don't do wrist rolls and all this because you'll build thicker hands. Right. And you want to build your finger strength, and that's exactly correct. So I know you're doing a lot of things like hanging, a lot mm -hmm. of experiments right now. Yeah, it's more or less experimental because it's like anything I do. You've got to figure out what works for you. Yeah. Like, even though I'm not 6'6 six, six and I can't just do everything else everybody else does, you got to figure out what works for you. More or less like the reverse hyper when I first came, 
I couldn't reach the handles. Yeah. So we had to like we had to throw on oh, another handle. That's why those are on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. I, I wonder why they're on there. All right. Um, you know, uh, all the all the listeners out here probably listen and said, "Damn, man, this sounds like a lot of bad tension." Louis Simmons said all these years. You know the problem with human race? It can't change. Yeah. If you don't change, you're stagnant and you die. Yeah. We changed. We broke three world records. I want to talk a little bit about Wes McCormick. McCormick. Uh, Wes, you know, um, two world records, 890, 900, or 165. So he decides to finally move up to 181. And his circumax weight, he uses 640 pound of band, and he made um, 475 pounds. And it's uh, and he goes to the meet. So it's a, it's a his record was 425. Mm-hmm. So he made a, a a 40 pound PR, and he goes to the meet and makes a 55 pound PR squad squad 955, yeah. and a 181. That's the second greatest squad of all time. And by the way, Jason Coker, his ex teammate, has a 950. So it's second and third in his gym. Yeah. And uh, how did he do it? Because he raised the circuit max. He broke that record and he broke that record in the meet. And it, it's exactly what I'm saying. You gotta be on the lookout for him though. Huh? He just PR'd again. Oh, yeah. Now he just did 500. Yeah. We're, wanting, we're looking to squat 980. Uh, he's lifting in the, in the same meet as Jeremy. We want to squat 980. It's right. a 25 pound PR, and he did that easy. Oh, he truly good. wants to squat a grand at 181. And I mean, well, tells it me looks every, like he could do it. He tells me every day about it. Yep. I know. You know, Wes. <laughs> he's crazy. Um, I, want, I want to bring up, like I said, it sounds extreme, but let me give you something really extreme. Okay. Um, uh, Melissa Stevens. Right. Melissa had a, a, um, a terrible brain trauma, and she couldn't do anything. I mean, this girl was out now. She couldn't even drive, couldn't work, couldn't do anything. And she had a 465 squat. So she finally gets healthy, had to go all the way to Florida for, from uh, uh, Mansfield, Ohio, to get fixed, but she got fixed. She got back. Well, Melissa's a, like a, a 132 you know, body weight, right. so I don't want her to cut weight. But I throw her ass right in there with everybody else, 250 pound of band tension. So right off the bat, her, her band tension is way over 50% of her squat and way over. And uh, so the way she's handling everything, she's, she's at 90 right on up to 100%. She's doing 25 lifts doing this. And um, as it went on, um, um, and then uh, her, tra- her, her barbell weights would be 205, 220, and 235 plus 250. And uh, that would be um, 87% and 90%, 95% of her new record when, when she went to meet and it did 520. Yeah. So that's a 55 pound jump on a 132 pound woman right. that didn't cut weight. You know, just walked in 132 and did that. So uh, all of you thinking this is too much. Now, why, why do we add band tension? When you add band tension, if I had a barbell weight, they'd all be smashed in the box. Yeah. But by adding band tension, it's accommodating resistance. You have some band shrinkage on the way down, although you have overspeed eccentrics, which contributes to greater reversal strength. All right? It's a, it's a, like, it's a force that's there but not recognized. It's a virtual force, which I don't think is a... I believe it is truly called a virtual force. Um, but she dropped down and did these weights, and she made these monstrous training where no one... If, you know, is there, Jeremy, the other model, lucky to get three reps, and you guys are doing, I make you do sets of six sometimes. Right. Five, six sets of six. Yeah. You got to be in shape. You got to pull sleds. You got to be in condition to do this. But you know, you want to be great or, or, or not. Yeah. Uh, every, you're going to have to sacrifice. But that pretty much concludes. And by the way, after all the squat workouts on Friday speed day, they immediately have to go do 25 right. deadlifts. Five sets of five, mostly on boxes. And Sinead went from 350 in nine months to 525 at a meet. Right. And it went from 350 squat to 730. And like I said, we're looking for big stuff. She, uh, she's already fifth biggest squatter of all time. We want to move up one notch. And uh, anyhow, so I think it covers everything. Tom, do you have any questions? Uh, I've got one for band tension to go back on that because that seems <clears> to be a big topic all around. One, it seems to be what you're saying is band tension is relative to the person regardless of like they want to come in and weigh it it doesn't matter that is what the band tension is if you squat 200 or squat a thousand yeah um i take i I basically because everybody we have 34 people to squat a thousand so for me i just take a thousand pounds and break the band tension down well we use 250 pound band tension forever and i got to think of why are my guys getting stronger matter of fact they're not even strong i thought maybe we accommodated to the 250 Right away, I took it. I added a, a blue and a purple in this gym. It's 320, 32% of a thousand. 
And then another wave was a blue and a green, which is 375, so 30, 37 and a half. And then a blue, green, a purple, which is 44, 44% of 1,000. Right. We pushed the band tension up. We slowed the barbell down. And we increased force. And the result is these tremendous records. Basically, Jeremy, you, you were a part of the, you were the guinea pigs. Your monolith, your group all made tremendous progress. The other group sucked. Well, that morning, that morning crew, everybody, I feel like everybody that comes in at that 4.45 in the morning right. has something to prove. Yes. No matter who it is. Like, everybody has it. Like, you think about with Heidi, broke her arm, she's coming yes. back. There's fire <laughs> under that belly. And squatted 6.55 right. like nothing at yeah. 1.48. Yeah, yeah, Melissa, who came from her <clears throat> dramatic thing, yeah. has a fire under her belly. Yeah. Me, just, I just have something to prove. I feel like that all. Right. Sinead always has something to prove. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody there in that 4.45 Always has something to prove. And not afraid to train. Who's going to show up at 445? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, like, at the same time, it's like everybody there has something to prove. And if you sandbag something, they're not afraid to call you out. Oh, no. You'll, you'll hear it. No, it's a trashy mouth bunch right there. It's like with the uh, football players that came in. It's like uh, they're all women. Bitches be crazy. Yeah. The, the football players that came in, and they're like, oh, we'll go train with the girls. <laughs> yeah. And I fucking saw, like, a couple football players lying on the ground. That's right. I'm like, it's not... <laughs> We had a group come in, Tom, last week from Michigan and Colorado. They they were throwing up next to the bottle. I'm going like this is this. Uh, I mean, I, I couldn't even believe. It. I'm not going to say who they were. Well, that brings up uh, another, one I, of them was an ex world record holder. <laughs> that brings up another question too. Yeah, did I by, answer your question? Yeah. Okay. But by increasing the band mm. tension, the byproduct of that does that increase work, work capacity because you've Ab got absolutely. So See, then, is it a is the issues you have? Is it a work capacity issue that people don't want to put it up? You think that's that's a big I, reason not, why? I'm not going to say who. I told a gentleman they had to pull heavy sleds. I never pull, saw him pull more than two plates. Now you know what that is, Tom. That's nothing. Melissa's out there pulling five fucking plates at 132 pounds. Yeah. Right. And I mean, you know, some people could comprehend it, and some can't. But the ba but the, the key to the bands. It, it the, the the weight is perfect. All you know, it has to be a perfect weight in the bottom and a perfect weight at the top. It's impossible with barbells. It's also impossible with bands because if you use just bands in the bottom, it would be so much shrinkage. You know, it would be too light. Right. And at the top, I mean, it's, it's a monster. But by using a combination of method training uh, with the bands added onto the barbell, it works perfect. Well, and then just to that point, Jeremy, you got to have more weight coming out of the hole just because of. Mm -hmm. Like the dimensions you have, so right. like yeah, he he has a highest ratio. Yeah, so his squat, at four twenty five, you know, is a circa max, you know, at, at, at a six seventy squat. Yeah, because yeah. like Shanae did four forty five. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys, you know, uh, at that time, I think we tied. Yeah, we tied, and um, but she got a, a seven thirty squat. Yeah, so you see, his ratio is much higher. Then that like brings it's answering another question too that we get asked does this system work for raw lifters does this system work for kids does this system work for women but it works for everybody and your dimensions are so different but you're on the same like foundational plan as everyone yeah. but is is there any adaptations that you have to make to exercises or to lifts uh, like being the the height and stature you are is there anything you have to amend for like are you just saying in squat in general or, or just just in, in training in general is there anything that that you found that carries over better to you, or is it everything is applicable from the system? I think everything from the system is very, the carryover for anyone is going to be drastic. It all depends on if you're able to do the system or not. And it all takes, like, you can have the biggest muscles in the world, you can have the biggest power in the world, but if you can't mentally get your head around that, you have to step under that bar at the end of the day and do it, you're not going to be able to do it. So I think that the carryover is going to be great, no matter if you're a dwarf, if you're a regular person. Six six ten. Yeah, Chris Spiegel. People people can do it no matter what. Yeah, you, know, you know, Tommy brought up a question. I, I'm going to say one thing. I'm going to give the ultimate answer. You ask about raw and gear. Um, you know, Showtime. Come where's canvas? The whole nine yards. Box squatted uh, with a blue and a green band. He box squatted five thirty five and three hundred seventy five pound of band tension. His training partner who trains uh, you know on Sunday, uh, Aaron, uh, was a raw lifter. He wears no gear. And they're both two, was two seventy fives. He made the very same weight raw, and he went to meet, and they both squatted eight fifty five. Why? Math is math. Gravity is gravity. Now the ultimate, ultimate, is Vlad, the Ukrainian. 
He's here in his gym in the meet. He squatted 1,250 pounds, and he pulled a 925 deadlift. He had knee injuries, and he got out for a while, came back, lifted raw. He has squatted 1,157 raw, by far the greatest raw squat of all time. It doesn't matter if you're raw or you're geared. Math is math. Velocity is velocity. You people got to realize um, everything's measured velocity. It's not measured light or heavy. No. So, I mean, the strongest man in the world uh, compared to the weakest man in the world, the weakest man in the world's weights would be very heavy. It would be very slow, but the, it, for a strong man, he lifts it very quickly. It's velocity, not heavy or light. Then, right. And the recovery is all the same because you hear that. The big guys say, oh, I, I lift so much, but it's all relative. It's all relative. So if you can recover, the girls can recover, everyone should be able to. It's all based on work capacity. That's a big thing. Yeah, and, expect, and men have 25% more muscle fiber than women, and my women can kick some serious ass. Yep. And that's the whole problem. The men, a lot of times, don't have the work capacity. And they, you cannot have a high box. I will give you an example here while we're doing the podcast. Years ago, 19, in around 1990, because there was no monoliths, I walked out in, in crap gear. I walked out 855 on a 15-inch box, which is my record. I walked out 8, 805 on a 14-inch box. I walked out 755 on a 13-inch box, and then 680 on a 12. But every inch I dropped from, from the 15 to 14 to 13, I dropped 50 pounds. If, the, if you take an inch uh, uh, off your box, one, one inch mat, you're going to drop 50 pounds in the squat. So if you're not getting these numbers, like I said, if you squat 600 in a blue and a green hooked up with 375 tension, you're a 1,000-pound squat. I've had, I've had 34 do it. So don't tell me it don't work, and you can't count the nines because we've – I mean, that's obsolete here. 900-pound squats is like, that's obsolete. And the same thing with them. Um, 600 and, uh, and 375 pound of band tension is going to get you, um, well, that's a nine. But if you, if you added a band, 440 pound of band in six places, 1,000 pound squat. And the last one is Travis and also um, Trevor. We just had two more guys do it. And uh, you, it brings up uh, another point, too, is that by increasing the band tension, on dynamic effort day just improves the importance of speed so you've changed that you've increased velocity against bands relative to your own speed but by changing dynamic effort that day has increased max effort and a lot of people don't understand that they, they keep going on and go you don't need speed or you lift heavy no you've adjusted because you wanted to avoid accommodation and then when you avoid that you're like that's why you change the band tension up and now look at everyone who does that is getting results on max efforts yeah, well, they laughed at me back in, you know, in 1982, and I started doing speed work. But they don't laugh at us no more. They can still laugh at us, but we, they can't kick our freaking ass. Yeah. We beat we did them like Kuma Kinte. So that's just the way it goes. And, uh, you know, we talked about the, a little bit the other day. There was a podcast with Jay and Blakely, you said. I don't know whose podcast that was. Whose podcast was that? But whoever it was, um, Jay and said when he trained at Westside, he didn't do speed work. And he disagreed with me in speed work. I said, well, that's, that's very true. I remember having conversations. He told me one day, he said, you know, Lou, I went to school for six years for this. I said, well, you know, J.M., you went to the wrong classes. But there was J.M. and three other equivalent people in that gym, and those three other people were world record holders, and J.M. wasn't. To me, that kind of says it all. You need speed work. He made his own worst argument. Yeah. He didn't do speed work. He wasn't world record. J.M. was one of the strongest humans I've ever seen. I handed out. I handed out 545 to this guy thinking, see you later, JM. Takes 545 down and does a triple in JM press. I just, I was in, in, in amazement. I've been amazed at my gym several times. In the bench press, that's one of the most amazing things. So that's how yeah. damn strong guy, but he was too slow. You got to have a fast rate of force development. I don't care who you are, you've only got so long to strain to make a lift. Right. You only got so long, if you don't make it in that time period, you miss. You, know, you don't miss weights as they go up because they're heavy, really, because they're too slow. But no one thinks like that, but strength measures velocity. That's right. Yeah, people talk about the sticky point and how to build. One way is speed, because it's not imaginary. No. I mean, it, you, you just don't slam into something there. How come, like, why can you bench 350 through that, 400, 450, but 500 gets stuck? Too slow. And that's why when you bring in isometrics, even though you cut out the speed, you get maximum recruitment, so the speed of recruitment goes up. Right. And that's another thing, people. And you can generate 15% more uh, strength on isometric than you can on a movable bar. I like to do those, is it? Yeah. Especially in the bench. Right. Isometrics kill. Just I always did the hopping method, off one pin up to another. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I like to keep track. I wanted to use weights so I knew what I was really lifting. That's all I got. Okay. Well, Jeremy, thanks a lot. No problem. Now, I know you're going to be here full time pretty soon. Pretty soon. And I can't wait. <laughs> all right. This is Westside. Over and out.